Welcome, Eric. I know you have a lot of things going on in your world right now, and so I'm very appreciative that we could make time for this conversation. Likewise. So um, there's so many things we could talk about today. I um, I just really am inspired by the work you're creating in the world and uh, definitely want to talk about your approach to leadership. Uh, but I'm very curious. One of the reasons we scheduled this was so I could uh, share your insights and experience, recent experiences taking coaching development training, leadership development training into um, our prison system uh, and we won't I, we don't I guess we probably shouldn't name which prison you were in but no uh, that's, all, that's okay it's a uh, okay cool I, 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 I got uh, yeah uh, it was and I'm probably mispronouncing it so I want mm -hmm. to apologize in advance uh, it was called or it is called Sagaro S-A-G-U-A-R-O uh, okay. correctional correctional facility yeah all right. Yeah. Is it and it's in Southern Arizona. California? No, Arizona. Arizona. Okay. Yeah, it's Arizona. it's in um I believe Elroy, Arizona. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And um it uh it's part of a private uh prison uh company called Core Civic. Okay. And it was really interesting because um Half the class were, um, and th they don't call them um, uh, uh, inmates, they call them residents. Um, mm -hmm. Half the class was from the Department of Hawaii Corrections, and half the class was from the Department of Idaho Corrections. So what what was that like for you, I know you've done this work before, but uh, you know, first of all, what inspires you to do the work in uh, with people who are incarcerated? Um, it starts with my personal story, you know. Mm. So about um, twenty years ago, CTI, which is you know the Coactive Training Institute, uh, it's uh, um, I consider one of the best coaching trainings uh in the world and i worked for them and they went into san quentin and mm -hmm. asked me to be part of uh the delivery team there and um they wouldn't allow me in because i had a prior conviction uh so it started over 20 years ago when uh when that happened and i went through my own personal journey on that uh, I got a lawyer, got my record expunged, so I could, but then there were no opportunities. Um, mm. And then fast forward about six years ago, as you know, um, I turned 65 and I uh, had this epiphany that this is where I wanted to do the work for the rest of my life. And mm. I've been working with a lot of organizations. Mm -hmm. You know, as you know, also, I was working with anti-gun violence organizations, reentry organizations. And then out of the blue, uh, actually, uh, another uh, CTI leader was, in, you, you know, Anna Greta Maziata. Yes, she, yes, one of uh, our co colleagues on faculty at CTI. Yeah, yeah, she she was interviewing me. And at the end of the interview, she said, oh, I know an organization that works in prisons. Would you like to? do something with me so it's really uh anna greta that I, I i give most of the credit to here that it kind of <laughs> fell in my lap so that's oh, how it so all happened yeah amazing amazing and um what was it like to go in this time i know you've gone before but yeah this time it was uh like i said this is a private company it's called core civic right and uh and actually, I have to say, you know, from what I saw, I was very impressed with, you know, the, the training facility, the people that they employed. Uh, from what I saw, it was pretty like, wow, you know, I, I was expecting something different, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, what, what was it that was different? It sounds like there was more humanity than we would think for a for-profit. 
company in the yeah, prison system. Yeah, I mean, or, you know, yeah. yeah, I was expect. Yeah, I was. Yeah, and like I said, this is what I saw. I'm not saying it's the sum total. Yeah. Of, of gotcha. That company, but uh, the the uh, uh, the staff was amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the people that were in charge of learning uh, uh, the facility that we were working in was well lit, clean. You know, I mean, it was just a, a really nice space. Like, you know, better than some uh, of our organizational clients. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, and um, and and yeah, I mean, there were two women in particular that, you know, were learning people. Uh, uh, that just had huge hearts and you could tell that mm. they really cared for, mm. you know, the residents. So mm. that was a big surprise. And so what I came away with was, you know, um, it, <laughs> I felt like in a way, like I was in a Hollywood movie, you know, one of those kind of like feel good movies, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, but it was like, you know, I was still in prison. So it yeah. was like, uh, the, the way that I've been describing it, it was a dystopian world full of possibilities. Wow. You know, I mean, it was still, you're in prison, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you know, confined, you know that, uh, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of the men we were working with um, are not getting out, you know, they're, yeah. they're there for life. Yeah. I mean, it's heartbreaking. Um, but the flip side was it was like a 360 transformational experience. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was transformational for the uh, residents, and it was mm -hmm. transformational for um, you know the whole delivery team. It was uh, myself, uh, Anna Greta, and then there were two other women that. Uh, came in from another organization uh, called Coaching Beyond Fences. And then RECA, which stands for Reentry Coaching Academy, were actually the people that sponsored it. Got it. Got it. And so just so um, people who aren't caught up with the coactive methodology um, are aware that, um, you know, coaching is a set of leadership competencies almost of listening and um at being more curious and just being in relationship in a more powerful and empowering way. Um, and so for the folks who were in the room, what did you notice and see in terms of what, what they were getting? Cause coaching is also meant, it also assumes a lot of um, personal agency. So there must've been this, I just find it fascinating that you're working with people who have little fewer choices in their day to day about, and talking to them about, you know, being at choice and being free. And I, I just w wonder about that dichotomy and how, how I know you're very authentic and you're very good at um, being, sensing what people need in a room, but what did you notice there? <laughs> um, so first I want to give a little context. Um, we did not go in there cold. They, they were totally warmed up for us. And what I mean by that mm. was the month before Rika came in and uh, and they have their own set of uh, uh, learning tools and, uh, and structures and ways of being that they were mm. teaching, okay? Okay. So, and they also um, gave us a lot of credibility. So by mm. the time, uh, by the time we were in front of them, uh, this group of men were so ready for us. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, and as I told you, I mean, 70% of the class uh, are lifers. And, mm -hmm. um, and my sense was nobody was walking around claiming to be innocent of their crimes. And the overriding uh, feeling I got from that group of men was innocence. Not innocent of their crime, but right. innocence as human beings, um, they were so open, hmm. so willing, so vulnerable. Um, it was a dream class to teach. In fact, I, I wish the public classes were as easy yeah. as, as oh. I mean. Um, and, 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 and as I said, I, I, I felt like I was in a movie at times because the arc 
of um you know it was mm-hmm. called the fundamentals which is the you know um the basics of of coactivity the arcs in this class were astounding i mean the, the mm-hmm. things that uh we got to witness uh, will last with me for a lifetime wow. i'll give you i'll give you one example mm-hmm. um and you know this because you know the fundamentals, but the first exercise, we walk up to somebody and we ask, what's your dream? And so mm-hmm. Anna Greta walked up to this one resident and asked him, what's your dream? And uh, the look on his face was, and it wasn't in an antagonistic way. It was kind of like in a, like, totally, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, kind of yeah. like, you know, uh, the look was, I have no dream. You know, right. he, he couldn't come up with a dream. And then at the end of the two and a half days, as you know, there's a completion circle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when we got to that uh, man, he mentioned that he now has a dream. And so everybody mm-hmm. was waiting for him to say, so, you know, finally he said, my dream is to be of service and help other people. Hmm. And just things like that were happening throughout the whole uh, yeah. uh, experience. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness! I'm um, it's so appreciating your um, bringing this conversation here and just the the humanity. You know, I think that's to me the most heartbreaking thing about uh, an institution like our. Uh, prison system is the, um, the dehuman, dehumanization of folks, uh, that, that happens, or we wouldn't, we wouldn't have so many people locked up if we really viewed them as human. Right. So even the idea of, uh, corrections, uh, it, it just, just, it's antithetical to what the system seems to create. And I know very little about what's like inside. So I'm, it, it sounds like you were with a somewhat unique population. Were these folks self-selected or were they there on quote unquote, good behavior uh, or yeah, they were selected. But remember, I told you about those two women that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, I wish I could remember their names. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to. Yeah, I, I think it was Miss Benny and Miss Pringle or Tingle. I, I forget. Uh, <laughs> Very sweet <laughs> names. <laughs> uh, but but I, 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 I jokingly said to them, <laughs> you know, when I was completing and I was acknowledging them, I said, didn't we meet at a Grateful Dead concert in 1972? <laughs> you know, we were that kind of, you know, aura to them, you know. Fun. And uh, 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 they were responsible for the select. Also, kudos to them. Uh, mm. the, the, uh, you know, and and most of the men, uh, from what I was told, uh, were were or are considered shot callers. And do you know what shot callers are? Oh my gosh, it sounds awful. What is it? Well, shot caller, like in the corporate world, a shot caller would be a CEO. Oh, shot uh, caller. I thought you said shock caller. <laughs> no, no, shot caller. Shot um, caller. I got it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. In correction. So influential. So in, these are all influential people inside. Mm. I mean, they're, mm. they're, they're not staff, but inside, they command respect. Yeah. Uh, for one reason or another. Uh, so they were all leaders already. Okay. Mm. It was almost like doing an emerging leader. Um, you know, leadership development program. That's what, that's what it yeah. almost felt like. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know. What kinds of things do you think are they just the, the ripple they can have on the residents around them? And I'm kind of struck by that word residents. It, it feels respectful, but also, also euphemistic. So, but they, they appreciate the term I assume. And, and, um, own it as... yeah that, well that term comes from rika uh you know okay. uh and rika um is made up of formerly incarcerated people okay that got coaching training not cti oh. they got another 
form of coaching yeah. training. Um, yeah. And so I'm learning from them. Uh, yeah. You know, and that if that's what they want to yeah. call it, then that's fine with me. Uh, it is humanizing. You know, I, I, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm on my own learning curve here, you know, which yeah. is, uh, you know, you know, a, uh, I think it's a big part of the reason why I do the work also is not just to be of service, but also to have my own life transformed. Yeah. 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 yeah You're yeah. so humble in that regard. What was most surprising about the weekend or the three days? <laughs> the vulnerability. Mm, um, yeah. The, uh, the willingness and um, the risks and the um, all the stereotypes that we have about and, and fears and images that we have about the incarcerated population uh, yeah. were completely busted up. Mm. Um, yeah, another moment that I'll never forget. Um, so, you know, uh, the exercise sandbox, the first day of fundamentals. Yeah, it's, we're, you know, it's kind of a risky uh, exercise where people are learning and making mistakes together. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the, the uh, client was um, a, uh, uh, a man from Hawaii. Mm. And he was very shy and his uh, subject was health and of course it was the first time they got to coaching so they were constantly giving suggestions and trying to solve the problem and <laughs> you know which happens in any of the classes right absolutely um, yes and so we were just getting them to kind of get curious about and eventually he mentioned that as a kid he used to do hawaiian dance in fact he did it professionally as a kid. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and he would travel all around Hawaii and, you know, do Hawaiian dance. So he wasn't ready the first day to get up and dance for us. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. But he was ready to start considering doing Hawaiian dance as a way to take care of his health. Uh, and then suddenly on day three, uh, Another resident that wasn't even in the class came into the room with a guitar who was also from Hawaii. And this gentleman got up and did this Hawaiian love dance. That's the only way I can describe it. Uh, and, the, and, the, and the other resident was singing the song. And it was this like moment of just like, seeing this, I don't know, he may have been in his 40s, but this 40-year-old man be, you know, a 10-year-old kid again. Wow. And it was, uh, uh, like my mother uh, would say, it was, it was a five-handkerchief uh, handkerchief event. I mean, everybody was so moved. And there was this one uh, other uh, resident that was also from Hawaii, and he just burst out sobbing with happiness um, because he hadn't seen that in 30 years. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So just human joy, which human I can imagine joy. is rare in, in yeah. a setting like that or can be yeah. rare. Uh, yeah. Human joy, human um, vulnerability. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, it was inspiring. It was mm. just so, uh, and, and and that's the magic of the coactive. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, classroom, uh, another right? thing that's popping <clears throat> up to me was uh, the peak experience exercise, mm -hmm. and there was one participant the whole uh, workshop. He said nothing. He's what you would call the strong silent type. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we do the peak experience. And as you know, we take people back to like a peak experience, right? And, yes. and uh, we get them in touch, you know, and even as I was doing the exercise, you know how we, we say, you know, 
uh, what's the taste of it? What's the smell of it? You know, you know, all the senses. I was thinking, is this going to fly in this environment, right? Yes. Uh, so anyway, uh, when we're done with the exercise, this gentleman uh, spoke for the first time. And his peak experience actually happened inside. Uh, oh. And he was talking about working with a team I think it was a welding job, right? Yes. And, and he was in charge. He was like the foreman. And the camaraderie and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the excellence of, of the work that they did. And then the people that they were working for um, treated them with respect. And they, and, they, and they gave him chocolate chip cookies. Not him, but the whole crew. The team. Would, would get chocolate chip, chip cookie, and the look on his face when he was talking about the chocolate chip cookies was just, yeah. The senses are alive in prison, you know. I mean, yeah, he, he, you know, uh, everybody's mouth was watering the way he was describing these chocolate, you know, like they were homemade, you know, and it was like it was really, really special. And it sounds like it's like the in a way, the little ple pleasures that we can take for granted and that we have such a abundance of in the, um, in the outside world. Right. So yeah, exactly. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so what's, um, what's next for this program or for your, your work, or is there a next, first of all, I just want to say, it sounds like just the three days itself were enough, like that. Yeah those folks, you know, that you were of service to them, they learned some new things, but they also got some attention, some um, enrichment, some of the, some personal development that will of course ripple out, but even just those, sometimes we just, we're always looking at what's next, or I'm always looking at what's next. I think you no, want to no, share no. that, but, but there was something really powerful and almost therapeutic about that time together. Totally. Yeah. Um, so I want to give you a little bit of context. Um, with Rika, there's a, a what's next. We, okay. You know, at least for this particular, and, and this is a pilot program. We're hoping what's next is that this is, you know, I mean, um, Core Civic, I think, has 70 for, uh, facilities throughout the United States. And yeah. we're hoping Core Civic loves this. And uh, also to Core Civic's uh, um credit they're wanting to create a coaching culture that's why they nice. brought rika in and yeah. rika i think it's a three or a four month program so they did the first week then um uh cti was the second week and now they're going into the third week and in the third week they're training this group of men to be uh, facilitators for the RICA content so that when mm. they leave, the work can continue on. Okay, nice. so that's that's the big vision there. Um, mm. In terms of the coaching training, uh, the feedback was off the charts. And the one complaint that they had was they wanted more. Yeah, yeah. So, of course, that's up to the powers that be. Mm -hmm. But I would like to see uh, the entire curriculum. Yeah. I would like to see a program where we can get uh, the residents uh, certified through ICF. Beautiful. Um, so that's, like, the, the bigger vision. and mm -hmm. uh, And then, of course... Um, I'm just hoping for the ripple effect, you know, the, yeah. the impact that would have on the rest of the prison, uh, the impact that it would have on the families of the people that can get trained in what I consider a remarkable methodology called mm. coactive. Yeah. Um, and that's the dream. Yeah, that's beautiful. What's the connection to your purpose in the world? Well, I have a, uh, uh, 
uh, you know, I, I have the CTI version of my purpose, but I, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't actually, um, well, maybe it does. I mean, the C, I'm going to give you the CTI version, then I'm also going to give you my new version. Okay. So, uh, at CTI, my, uh, uh, yeah, my purpose is I'm a, 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 a clueless bad motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> who I love it. <laughs> who, who vulnerably and lovingly will transform you. Mm. And if you ask me how, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> right. Oh. Um, but I think the the the, the purpose, the, the bigger purpose for me mm -hmm. is to make the invisible visible mm. and what better place to be on purpose than in a correctional facility where Definitely. they are li they are literally invisible yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's it. that's amazing it almost sounds like that's your mission in a way and if people can have personal missions like yeah. that would be yeah that's my personal personal mission yeah yeah and, and and you know that ripples out to other things too as you know i've um i call it um because i got schooled it's not originally uh original but i i, I call it emerging talent communities and the, mm. those are the uh formerly it, they were called marginalized or underserved communities um yes. i i think there's a lot of brilliance a lot of talent mm. that just doesn't get seen. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 You yeah. and I definitely share a uh, a desire for uh, everyone to reach their potential. I think is another way to. I love this idea though of making the invisible visible. That sounds really so. You and uh, very broad. It can cover a lot of different contexts, which I know you work in a lot of different contexts. So. Yes. 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 I yes. want to share one. Um, term with you and then we can decide where to go next yeah um, sure i was just watching this i just a uh, ted talk caught my eye on youtube the other day and i don't spend a lot of time on youtube but um it caught my eye for some reason and i started watching it and the woman i'll see if i can find it and put in the show notes but the woman was talking about some of our favorite topics about um you know the the systems as they are, are built aren't don't serve everyone equally and um, there's a big uphill for this emerging talent community that you're talking about. And she made the contrast between the utopia that she was a little critical of tech companies and the utopian uh, view they have, like we're going to go to Mars and we're going to, you know, do all these things that really end up being for like 10% of the population. Right. And then, um, at, at, and then at the best. At best, right, maybe even lower. And then the opposite of utopian is dystopian. And she talked about how Hollywood, you know, feeds off the dystopian model of, you know, it's all going to hell and um, and there is no hope. And this is where we're all going to end up is in this dystopian world. And she offered a new vision, which was, she called it, I think you'll like this, Astopia, U-S-T-O-P-I-A. <laughs> <laughs> and that was kind of more of what we believe in coactive leadership and what we both offer to our executive coaching clients and others is this idea that we can all leadership is not a position. It's a, it's a holding of responsibility. It's a you know, taking responsibility for the world that we're building together. And so I just love this idea of Astopia. I thought, and you know, you strike me as someone who is working on that vision of the world. Oh, thanks. I can get behind that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, before we move to anything else, I want to give a real shout out to Anna Greta Maziata. Oh, yeah. Sorry we didn't get uh, her on with you. That would have been awesome. Yeah, yeah. Because um, w w working a and she was a little bit like, well, I kind of understand, Eric, why you're doing this, but I don't really understand why, you know, somebody like me is doing it. Uh, and uh, she was off the charts brilliant. I bet. In 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 uh it was such a privilege working with her. She was just so intuitive. Uh she created such powerful connection. 
And mm. I just I, I, I just need to give a shout out to her. I'm so glad you did. Yeah, if you're one of the godfathers of Coactive, she's definitely one of the uh, fairy godmothers. <laughs> her and Doug. Uh, Doug may not want to be a fairy godmother, but... <laughs> <laughs> the two of them are married and also faculty with us. So that's exactly. uh, we're telling exactly. these stories that are not going to be understandable to everybody listening, but that's okay. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really curious, like, how do you, you know, you do a lot. Like, I imagine you must work like a 14 hour day, Eric, but you're, you're doing equity work, you're doing corporate um, coaching and training and, uh, and like, how do you keep it all all going and like what what's that like <laughs> I, I i think um well you know i got diagnosed <laughs> i got diagnosed with adhd when i was 40 and that, oh wow you know that, that that answered a lot of like uh i think the question that i i think i thrive on you know having five or six balls up at a time it doesn't uh, very rarely, every once in a while, I'll feel like I'm doing too much, but mm. but that's very, very rare. I kind of thrive on variety. I thrive on, uh, uh, I think, and I think it has to do with my ADHD. I love the unknown. Mm. You know, the, the, the less I know, the better. Mm. Uh, I, I seem to be in my element when... You know, everybody else is going, oh, no, what are we going to do here? That's when I'm most comfortable. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, I Well, I you're bringing I, a lot of humility to your answer, because I also know that um, you bring a ton of um, mastery for incompetence to um, your audiences. And that's because of, you know, you've got the tires on uh, what is it the miles on your tires <laughs> i got the uh, yeah yeah and you're well, also and some, well and some trained. of my tires are bald you know uh, yeah yeah but you're well trained you know what i mean you've I invested am, I in mean, yourself yeah, yeah, you continue to true. invest in yourself you, you, yeah. you're right i i i you know um and maybe i need to start owning that more you know so thank you for you yeah know, of course bringing that up yeah yeah absolutely. yeah yeah i uh absolutely um, yeah, I, uh, I guess, uh, you know, when I was a kid, Popeye, Popeye was my, uh, uh, hero <laughs> and he had that famous line, I am what I am, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, so my knowledge comes with that, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it does. It does. Yeah. <clears throat> well, um, I would love for listeners to get an update on your badass leadership model, which um, badass, I, I don't, I, I, bold? No, what's the first? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bo <laughs> uh, um, it, acronym. It's an acronym. So it's bold, authentic, disruptive, Ooh. agile. Yes. Supportive and spacious. What a combination. Yeah. yeah, and I assert that 21st century leaders need to be badasses. Um, yeah, and uh, and in the classes that I teach, um, basically, uh, I have. And, and by the way, I finally got this word, uh, and it's because of you, Nina. Okay. You get you. We were having this conver uh, 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 session maybe I don't know a year and a half, two years ago, and you used the word accessible. Do you mm -hmm. remember that? Mm -hmm. I well, guess so. <laughs> I, I yeah I, no, you used the word accessible. Like uh, mm. I think, and I think you were saying all oh, the models that you you've created uh, are a way to uh, access, uh, access different parts of yourself. So right. I got to thinking. Um, wow, you know, you, you were right. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the work that I do is all about uh, uh, ex ac what I now call assessment. Oh, right. So, you know, and um, in the coaching world, for those who are not coaching uh, uh, coaches, um, assessment 
uh, tools are the assessment thing. Tools. Like yes. if you don't have a, an assessment tool, you're not a coach. Okay. Right. To, to some people. Right. Right. Um, I loathe assessment tools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't actually coach with them. Uh, and the reason I loathe them is because by its very nature, mm -hmm. it's judgmental. Mm -hmm. Either you're judging yourself or you're judging another person. You're assessing them. So the work that I do is all about, yes, there's a little bit of assessment. You have to, you have to look and see where you're strong in one area and where you want to build a muscle in other areas. But it's much, much more about learning how to access different parts of yourself. So the badass model is mm. all about that. I also have the five knowledge centers, which is uh, also an assessment tool, uh, yeah. you know, head, heart, gut, groin, and hands. And, you know, we access different parts of ourselves uh, uh, and, 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 you know, get knowledge from all of those different things. So in my leadership uh, development work, um, I'm really, really focusing uh, on that. Beautiful. And what uh, strike, what I love about that is it seems like you should copyright that, by the way. I did. <laughs> Accessment. Oh, no, no. Did you? Okay. I just Beautiful. did. Yes. You know, yeah. I love yeah, it. Exactly. I love it. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I, I did. And I give you credit, you know. Oh, that's very sweet. Um, well, as someone who does like assessments um, and maybe is <laughs> I know, less I know, comfortable I know with I'm the gonna, I, I unknown. Know, I, I know I'm pissing off a bunch of people. By saying no, that. no, no. It's it's good. But I think we're I think I, I hear the alignment, which uh, I think that's what's interesting about uh, our values. Right. It's like it's the how we do things varies. And that's what we end up arguing about our debating but the why we do what we do is the same and and i think the intention i think what you're saying is and i would agree with is like the intention of an assessment isn't to put someone in a, in a box it's to be a process of discovery and it sounds like you're finding even a stronger way to do that by just starting with uh that word assessment which is very clever <laughs> yeah well thank you thank you yeah yeah, yeah. you know um what else? Well, this is just delightful. I'm just enjoying your company and um, we don't have to talk much longer, but what else uh, would you like people to know about your, your work or, or <laughs> the leadership that we know is needed in the world right now and that keeps us um, motivated to, to do the work we do? That's a great question. You're a coach, are you? <laughs> At my better moments. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm also involved in an environmental group. That's right. I'd, I'd like to talk a little about, about that group. Yeah. Um, and it's totally put me on the learning curve. Mm. Uh, uh, and it's called Living Cities Earth. And um, and they have a huge, huge vision, which is to uh, impact 10,000 cities in 10 years um, and, uh, and basically create cities that create environments where people can live well. Mm. And um, I first got involved in a very peripheral way and now... I'm really involved. I, you know, I kind of got hooked, uh, and it's it's, you know, like I say, I'm on the learning curve because I, you know, um, basically the the only thing I knew about environment before I joined this group was to separate the plastics from the rest in the garbage, <laughs> and uh, you know. <laughs> and now, and now I'm, you know, uh, hanging out with climate scientists and, uh, you know, people that build green cities and, uh, and, and, uh, and I feel very much like Sally Field when she got the oxers, you know, she said, you like me, you really like me, you know, they're, they're uh -huh. very inviting. And, 
that you know that they they want my contribution and um and yeah that also is giving me a lot of purpose right now yeah yeah i love that i'm yeah. so glad you're doing that work and i know from attending a living cities earth event that um it is a um a holistic organization it feels like they want to be um and i think more and more of the um climate organizations who are doing the the work, the inner work that needs to be done, I think in any of these places where we are trying to resolve big, big systemic um, issues and not even resolve, but just move towards, <laughs> move towards a healthier planet, yeah. right? It's a dynamic, it's one of the most dynamic systems that we're all a part of is this beautiful earth that we live right. on right. and we take advantage of. But uh, that sounds very rewarding. And I'm so glad that someone of your, your talents is um, involved in that movement. And, uh, and it's also a fairly diverse organization. Cause that's the other thing that I'm always on the alert for is, <clears throat> am I perpetuating dominant cultural norms by the places I belong to, or am I, you know, putting my investment in places where they're paying attention to equity in addition to, you know, how do we address climate? So, and those two no, are so and for sure, and, and this organization is equally, invested in, in, in what you're talking about the social yeah. constructs that you know make a city work or not work and um and and that's where i really feel like i can make a contribution yes yeah, yeah. and that's great too to um i know for me it's important to find some place in my life to be leading not coaching you know because i think that it's only there that we understand and have empathy for the incredible amount of complexity that leaders in the side organizations and outside <laughs> organizations are dealing with. Right. You, you bet, you bet, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. it can be humbling. Yeah, so how can sure. people find you? Where's the best place for those who want to, besides listening to this conversation, hopefully, but, um, how can people be aware? Should we, we'll put your website in the notes too, but is there yeah, anything you else can, you'd like um, to, well, you can put my website, you can put my LinkedIn, if you, Excellent. that's not, yeah, yeah, that's probably yeah. the two best ways to get in touch with me. Um, one of the things also, you know, you were asking about is that a lot of the work that I want to do is, uh, yes, going into, you know, emerging talent communities, but I also know that there's a lot of people that are privileged like me. Mm -hmm. that want to also do this kind of work um, and get in touch with me. I want to support you. Nice. You know, okay. uh, because it will change your life. Mm. That's why. Uh, in, in, in the best sense. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Well, I yeah. love that offer. Um, no wonder you're so busy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Eric, for the work you're doing in the world and the example you set. And uh, I'm looking uh -oh. forward to hopefully getting to sit beside you in a classroom sometime well, soon. I, well, let's make <laughs> let, let's make it happen, you know. And yeah. and thank you so much for having me here a second time. I really, I'm, yeah. I feel I feel honored. Thank you. Well, yeah, yeah. you're always an in, always interesting, and you know, an f bomb here or there. <laughs> Keeps the conversation lively, right? If I can have you back for just that. <laughs> I, can, I can't, you know, I can't take the New York out of me. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, if it's me. in your purpose statement, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you again. Oh, thank you too.